We're finding that our 1995 calendar and garden planner is a big hit, and we want to thank all of you who have ordered them and hope that you're actually finding them useful as you start your gardening tours this spring. Now, we've had a lot of interest in them, and again, we want to say thank you, but a lot of people are still asking how they can order them. Well, we have a few left, and remember, again, they're $12 now, which includes postage and handling, and you can just write to us here at Oklahoma Gardening, and the address is on the screen. But what we're finding is a lot of people are using them more as a reference book instead of a calendar. And let me show you what we're talking about. Remember, each month, or each week even, has gardening tips. And if you open up to the week of March here, um, the 12th, which is about the time that we're taping this show, you can see that we have a tip of avoid removing foliage from spring flowering bulbs and then it tells you why. Well that's really a good tip and it's one that we get a lot of questions on this time of year. For example, like under hyacinths and daffodils and tulips and crocus and all those. And remember, the foliage, once the flower's over, a lot of people don't like the foliage, but the foliage needs to die naturally. The worst thing that you can do is cut the foliage off because the foliage is what feeds the bulbs or tubers or whatever we have here for the next year's growth. Now probably most of them disappear pretty quickly with the exception of daffodils or narcissus. They seem to hang around a little bit longer. So one thing that you can do to kind of get it under control where it doesn't look quite so wild, once it declines a little bit, you can just roll them up in a ball and use like rubber bands to tie them and, and try to keep it where it looks a little bit neater. And last year when we were visiting the Can Memorial Gardens in Ponca City, they gave us a tip where they actually wait a little bit longer and they'll tie them in a knot and again it keeps it kind of under control and the, the leaves or foliage is still there getting the sun and, and going to feed the bulbs and doing what it needs to but it doesn't look quite so shaggy looking so remember to leave them. Also some people will plant things in the fall and then they've decided well this spring when they're blooming I don't like where they're at. If you're going to transplant these, you need to wait till this coming September, October, November to do that. And of course, the foliage is gone by that time. So now's a good time to put any markers or labels in. You can use flags or anything. Be careful. Sometimes the dogs like to pull these up. And again, you wouldn't know where they're at. But that'll help you find them in the general location this fall when you need to transplant them. Now, if you have any other perennials, which I'm sure a lot of you do because they're so popular, Now's the time to do a lot of good gardening tips, and there's some right things and wrong things, and let me show you what we're talking about. We're getting ready to convert this particular bed into our ornamental grass display, and as a result, we're going to try to move some of our daylilies into another location. Now, really, it's a little bit too late. We should move them when the buds and the foliage just start to pop through the ground. But with the recent ice, snow, and rain, it's put us behind like I'm sure it has many of you. But it's still okay to try to do it, but get it done as quickly as possible. The first thing that we've done is just try to pull away some of last year's foliage, rake some of the mulch away, and you'll notice some of the uh, flower spikes from last year that pop out real easy. Just try to clean it up a little bit. And then just take this shovel and cut it right outside the edge of the foliage. And then try to pop it right out of the ground. And sometimes you'll have to jar it a little bit to get it to break loose. Now this is an excellent time for you to go in and divide it if you want to share some with your neighbors. Kind of lay it on its side. And to avoid some of the foliage, just take a knife and cut it right down the center of the root ball. And once again, you know we still have this problem with knives here on the show. But just split it like this and, and really don't worry about it. I think that's all we're going to divide this one. But gosh, some of the daylily uh, groupings can be really big and you can get three or four out of them. So we'll just set those in the bucket here. And we're going to just go ahead and carry them on over to another bed where we're going to plant them. Well, on our daylily, it's like many other plants. You want to put it in the ground the same depth that it was grown. And that looks pretty good because it'll settle some. And I'd encourage you not to put any fertilizer or starter solution or anything like that in now because really you don't want to burn the roots and let it get established and get a lot of growth on it. And then you can side dress it with some fertilizer. Also, remember to plant it in the same location. If you take it out of full sun, 
and then put it in full shade, you're going to have some problems because daylilies actually prefer full sun or half day sun. And we're putting it in a location where it's going to get morning sun and probably a little bit too, depending on the diffusion of the pine trees. Just kind of pack the soil in there a little bit, level it out, and then we'll come back in with some mulch and then just water it in. Now you can tell in this particular bed we're planting it in, there's a lot of other perennials in here that really need a lot of attention too. One of the interesting things though is Monarda that we planted last year. Perennials remember just get better year after year. They spread and get bigger, they're clumps. And that's very obvious with this particular Monarda. Now there's one weed coming up in here, broadleaf weed. But we put in a four inch pot right here in the center and look how much it's going to spread just in this one season. That will tell you uh, if anything's going to be pretty aggressive and take over. So this may be one we have to try to get under control eventually. Now right over here is another type of Monarda that's more of a clump type. And really anything you do, just a general cleanup, you can pull the leaves out. These break off pretty good or you can prune them out. But you can see the green that's coming up and you just need to cut it back to that point. And again, it's more of a clustering type Monarda. It's uh, one that grows up a little bit more upright compared to this one that's spreading. Now this is probably very typical of a lot of the perennials. You can tell the chrysanthemums over here, we've left the dead top on it to try to insulate the crown for the winter. Now you see a little bit of green starting to pop up, so we'll cut them back right above that green area. And the same holds true for asters over here. And even on this side of me over here, you'll see that we have some hibiscus. And again, we can just cut those pretty much back to ground level because they'll sucker up from the bottom. But we have one perennial over here and a couple of other beds I want to show you that's going to require just a little bit different attention for this season. Well, there's literally hundreds of different types of ornamental grasses out on the market these days, as you'll see this year, because that's one of our major themes for this season. But really, ornamental grasses pretty much receive the same attention as other types of perennials, but we really encourage you to leave the grass and the foliage on during the wintertime. Not only does it insulate the crown again, but there's really a lot of unique colors to different grasses through the winter, and also the sound of them brushing against each other is quite appealing through the winter months. But again, just like the other things, it's time to go ahead and cut them off. And you can use some of these types even for arrangements, which we'll talk about through the season too. But notice this particular clumping grass, which is called sea oats or chasmathium, is actually starting to send up new growth. So you don't want to cut below that because you would damage the foliage. And each individual grass depends on the cultivar and whether or not the grass is starting to pop through. So be sure and watch that. Now probably one of the most common ornamental grasses in the landscape is monkey grass or lily turf. And ours this year really didn't sustain a lot of winter damage. So use your judgment. Ours is kind of um, could go either way, but a lot of people, if they get damaged, they go ahead and cut those back with a lawnmower or shears like this. But again, look for the new growth starting to come up so you don't damage that. So as you can tell, there's a lot to do in the perennial beds, and it's time to get out and get them going before you get too much new growth and you damage that and any kind of new maintenance that you're doing to them.